Now the hilltop is destroyed. The Alpha is dead. But where is Michonne now? Go back four days. Michonne is on a boat, escorting a man back home. The man has promised to exchange heavy weapons from the island in return. With the weapons, Alpha zombies would no longer be a threat. After two days at sea, they finally arrive at their destination. As soon as they set foot on the shore, Michonne is eager to find the weaponry. She fears that Alpha might launch an attack while she's away. However, this man named Virgil seems nonchalant, taking Michonne on a sightseeing tour. He even leisurely picks flowers, claiming they are for his wife as a gift. Next, they arrive at a residential area. It's quiet, with books and a barbecue grill, but not a soul in sight. Michonne's suspicion grows. This man is definitely hiding something. Virgil leads Michonne to a place with three empty graves. With a shocked look on Michonne's face, Virgil knelt down and placed flowers on the graves. How could Michonne not understand? This man kept talking about his wife and child waiting for him at home. But it's clear now that Virgil's family is dead, and he lied to her. As Michonne prepares to leave, Virgil becomes anxious. With a mournful look, Virgil explains that this island used to attract some bad people who brought violence and disease. They killed his family, and their bodies are still inside the house, surrounded by zombies. That's why the three graves are empty. Virgil admits that he lacks the ability to get them out, but he knows Michonne is skilled with a blade. Virgil hadn't even finished speaking when Michonne realized that there were no weapons here. This man lured her here for her combat skills. Michonne's heart softens, and she decides to help Virgil retrieve his family. They arrive at the house Virgil mentioned, and indeed, there are zombies inside. They proceed deeper into the house, and a narrow corridor is blocked by cabinets. Michonne approaches and peeks through a gap, confirming a substantial number of zombies inside. Michonne plans not to disturb the zombies and quietly kills the ones in front of her. Gently laying their bodies down, Virgil drags the bodies away. Next, Michonne stealthily moves through the gap, with Virgil following closely. However, his foot gets caught in something, and no matter how hard he tries, he can't free himself. He unknowingly applies more force, causing something outside to collapse, not only blocking their retreat but also making noise. Now, all the zombies inside start rushing towards the corridor, in such a small space. Fighting would simply not do. Michonne didn't have time to complain about this pig of a mate. She quickly thought of a way out. Michonne rushed straight to it and pushed the zombies all the way forward. All she had to do was to rush straight to the hall inside. Inside, there weren't too many zombies. Maybe a dozen or so. There are no constraints when fighting here. Michonne is a really good fighter and these zombies can destroy them as long as they don't surround her. Virgil, on the other hand, struggled to handle the situation. He stayed behind the stretcher, narrowly avoiding being bitten. But the slowly advancing zombies were becoming overwhelming. Just when Virgil was about to reach his limit, Michonne took care of all the zombies. Virgil searched around but couldn't find his family. Finally, when they opened one of the rooms, they were shocked. The zombies inside were all hanging from the ceiling, and there were overturned chairs beneath them. It didn't take much to figure out what had happened. The survivors had no way to escape. They could only wait here to die. Virgil knew they wouldn't survive, but his heart was bleeding as he watched the scene. The despair they must have felt could only be imagined. An hour later, Michonne helped Virgil move and bury the bodies of his family. Michonne only wanted to find the weapons and quickly return home to be with her family. However, every time she brought up the topic of finding the weapons, Virgil would divert the conversation. Finally, Michonne had no choice but to take a break for the night. She lay on the couch, but sleep eluded her. She picked up the walkie-talkie on the bedside table, hoping to contact Judith. However, upon opening it, she heard nothing but static. It seemed the distance was still too great. Just then, there was a commotion outside. Michonne grabbed her weapon and quietly went to investigate. It sounded like people were talking, following the noise. Michonne entered a nearby house. Upon entering one of the rooms, she found various ammunition boxes, but they were all empty. Suddenly, she heard voices again. And this time, it wasn't just one person talking. The sounds were coming from the adjacent room. As Michonne moved closer to investigate, she finally confirmed that the voices were coming from the room next door. Just as she was about to listen closely to what was being said, Virgil appeared at the doorway. This man was indeed up to no good. Michonne, infuriated, attempted to open the door, but no matter how hard she tried, it wouldn't budge. She resigned herself to sitting against the wall, conserving her energy. However, no more sounds came from the other side of the wall. The next morning, Michonne woke up to find food on the ground. Someone had obviously delivered it while she was asleep, and they had also taken her weapons. Michonne didn't want to be trapped like this, 
so she attempted to knock on the window once again. Upon Michonne's questioning, the three people in the adjacent room explained, Don't think about escaping, this place is filled with traps. We used to be research scientists together with Virgil, and we were friends before. Sometimes, wanderers would come to the island, and we would offer them shelter, but as more people arrived, arguments over food escalated, leading to violence and even death. Virgil had just returned from the outside, and he was suffering from panic attacks and mental instability. He locked the doors to this building without realizing that his wife and child were inside. After coming to his senses, he had a complete meltdown and imprison us all. After learning about Virgil's situation, Michonne calmed down. She then proceeded to eat the food to regain her strength. But something went wrong. Virgil's voice gradually became distant, and the world around her started to change. When Michonne became conscious, she went back in time 10 years. Andrea was being chased by zombies. She stood by and did nothing to help. Andrea was reduced to a pile of flesh. Next, the helpless man on the road transformed into her, and Rick showed no intention of stopping the car. Even Daryl, in response to her pleas for help, gave her nothing more than a few glances. In the end, she struggled without supplies. She fought the zombies with every ounce of strength she had. That's when she met Negan and joined him as his right-hand man. Even the Night of Judgment in the Grove was carried out by Michonne. Ultimately, when Rick led the three major communities in a counterattack, Negan's forces began to crumble. After she had killed two people, Daryl shot her with an arrow. She tried to pick up the long knife, but one of Rick's feet stepped on her arm and fired the final shot. Michonne saw an ending that was different from reality. Something in the food must have made her hallucinate. Virgil stood beside her, and it was clear that he was also feeling some guilt. He handed Michonne a glass of water. Michonne didn't refuse. She took it and started to drink it, but this was just a tactic. Her other hand was already touching the spoon. This caught Virgil off guard. He tried to pull out his dagger but Michonne held him down. Michonne hadn't eaten for over a day, and her strength was waning. Eventually, she let Virgil escape. At this point, the people in the adjacent room were calling out to Michonne for help. Eventually they started to chase Virgil. By the time they arrived at the beach, the boat had already been burnt and they were now completely trapped on the island. They can only continue to track Virgil and vent their anger. Virgil is slowed down by a wound in his thigh, and is pounced upon by Michonne, who then puts a knife to his neck. Virgil quickly explained, I brought you here with another purpose to free them, but they'll kill me. So I thought having you with me would keep me safe. I didn't realize you'd found them first. I never intended to harm any of you. The others were furious and urged Michonne to kill him. However, despite her anger, Michonne refrained from doing so. In the end, this man was simply a pitiful soul. Michonne tried to reason with the three individuals, telling them that killing Virgil wouldn't change anything. It would only cost them their own humanity. They eventually calmed down, realizing that Virgil had no significant blood feud with them. It's just that after being locked up for so long, they need to vent. The next day, Michonne searched all the buildings on the island and found no weapons. Virgil said, take whatever you like and use it to pay off my debt to Oceanside. Michonne felt exasperated by being deceived, but she couldn't leave empty-handed. She went to a warehouse to select useful items. However, as Michonne was examining the items on a shelf, her mind suddenly went blank. She inched closer to confirm her suspicions. Weren't these the boots that Rick always used to wear? How could they be here? It was absolutely incredible. Rick had been missing for seven or eight years, and even Michonne had assumed he was dead. She never expected to come across something that belonged to him in this place. Virgil didn't expect Michonne to be so emotional, so he rushed Michonne to the sea. There was a big boat that was blown here by the wind a long time ago, and the boots were found in it. Excited, Michonne pulled Virgil towards the ship's cabin, eager to see if there were more clues. To prevent any trickery from Virgil, she handcuffed him. Michonne began searching, and a thick notebook caught her attention. It contained an address, New Jersey, Bridgie's Shipyard. This was a possible origin for the ship. Next, Michonne found a cell phone. If the boots had only made her feel hopeful, this phone was different, because she had given it to Rick. It had an encouraging message on it and a picture of her and Judith. At that moment Michonne's heart shook with the realization that Rick was probably still alive. She let out the breath she had been holding. Michonne controlled her emotions and then something occurred to her. She turned to look at Virgil and said, Could you have killed Rick and got something from him? And through this mobile phone also recognized her and Judith. Deliberately tricked her to come here. Upon Virgil's inquiry, Michonne regained her composure. That's the good news. Rick is probably still alive. Somewhere in the world. Virgil said, I don't know who you're looking for, but maybe it's fate that you and I met. 
Perhaps you were brought here to discover his trail. If someone helps me, this ship can still be fixed and you can get out of here. Maybe you'll find him when you get to wherever the ship came from. The next day, the ship was repaired, and the three individuals were ready to leave the island. It was the last available boat, and they were willing to let Virgil join them despite their past differences. It's just that sometimes feelings are the most unpredictable. Virgil chose to stay behind as he had promised his wife that he would bring her a bouquet of flowers every day. Michonne watched the figure in silence. Loyal love was the most honored of people, and she was one of those people. That night, while sitting in the ship's cabin, Michonne occasionally took out the phone to look at it. Tears flowed freely from her eyes. She also kept the notebook with the shipyard's location, hoping it would lead her closer to Rick. Finally, they were closer to land, and she could potentially contact her daughter. Judith's voice on the other end of the line reassured Michonne. She hoped the whisperers hadn't done anything yet. Michonne then talked about what she'd found, and how it was possible that Dad was still alive. Maybe in a place in New Jersey, Judith knew that Mom really wanted to go, but she must be worried about them. So Judith told Michonne, Mom, we'll be fine. Uncle Daryl will protect us. It's our wish to find Dad. What if he's out there somewhere and needs you too? With her daughter's encouragement, Michonne was determined to try. An hour later, Michonne was back on land, like she had 10 years ago. She walked, dragging two zombies, becoming a lone traveler once more. She would continue her journey northward heading towards New Jersey in search of Rick. However, as she walked, she stumbled upon two figures limping and helping each other. When they saw Michonne, they were frightened, fearing that they had encountered someone dangerous. The injured man nervously said, I'm injured, can you help us? They left us behind, they looked to their left. Michonne walked up to check it out and was shocked by the sight. Below them was not a horde of zombies, but a large group of survivors humans. It was the largest group she had seen since the apocalypse began. Michonne recalled the distrustful look she had received when she first arrived at the prison, but Rick had eventually accepted her. So, she decided to help these strangers. Michonne first kills the zombies that came with her and then looks at them, but that scared them. They thought the woman had gone on a killing spree. Come on. And so it was that they chased this large group forward. And Michonne won't be seen again for a long time. 